2022. I just want to say at the beginning, uh, we should all be very thankful. I know probably some of some people have been following uh, post the Queen Queen Elizabeth's death. Uh, a good example of where all of everyone as public servants can take. For, it's amazing for 70 years of public service. You know, I, I really honor that. Just wanted to make a brief brief mention of that. So keep her keep her in your hearts. Uh, we're now at the point to approve the agenda for the evening. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I'll move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion on the agenda? The only uh, thing, I, Chris. I'd spoke in the past about the issue with the the Bolton Pit and our town sand, and uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be tonight. But I'd like to talk about that again at some point soon. We have the agenda topic discussion on here, so that might be a good time to get it on an agenda. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would agree. <clears throat> the only thing I want to consider for, if, if we have time, we could put it at the end of the agenda which would be, I know all the select board individually got copies of the uh, kids' cancer proclamation. Right. So if we could discuss that at the, at the end of the... Item H? Yes, as item H. <clears throat> Any objections to that? I would rather do it on October 3rd, but if it's the majority yeah. wants to do it tonight, that's fine. I was going to say if we have time, if we're kind of a, at a reasonable hour, you know, we'll put it as a tentative agenda item. Okay. Uh, if we could have a vote to approve so I'll accept those as friendly amendments. So right. I move to approve the agenda as um, amended. Thank you. I'll second Motion. Uh, the amendment has been second. Approved as amended and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item is the consent agenda item, the minutes of the uh, two previous uh, select board meetings and the outside consumption permit for Smuggler's Notch Distillery. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda item. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yep. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> now is the time in the agenda uh, for anyone in the public who wishes to make a brief statement for any items that are not on the on the ready on the agenda. Does anyone wish to speak? Uh, to something and realizing you have two minutes. Tom? Do you mind coming up here just for audio yes. for our recorder friend? It's Tom Scribner for the minutes. <clears throat> Send those that way. Send those that way. Um, just for history's sake, this is 2009. This is Steve. That's Jesse Wing. They're out, and this is Mr. Kaiser and a budding neighbor to Hope Davy, at which time the uh, select board spent quite a bit of time involved in uh, changing things out there and trying to improve the situation. We're kind of reliving it. I'm just making that point. Where is that? This is this is a this is part of the select board process in 2009 Hope Park. Hope at Hope Davy yeah. over the same issues um, that are being dealt with today. Mm -hmm. um, I request that the social media policy be worked on by the select board, as I did a year ago, and spe specifically I'm asking that because David uh, Frothingham is the vice chair of the steering committee, and he's made two announcements on social media about the uh, steering committee process, and I have talked to you, Alyssa, about one source of information um, and I would prefer that there was one either one 
you know, the town website or one source of legitimate information regarding town process. Um, these are his two posts since the steering committee has met. And the last one uh, is from a year ago when this started with Mark Fryer, who identified himself as the chair of the select board and was discussing select board process on the center chain's um, Facebook page. At the same point in time, Frank Spaulding identified himself as the Recreation Committee Chair, and he was discussing Recreation Committee process on the Center Chain's website. And I don't believe that that's uh, appropriate. I think the town needs to have a social media policy. I think information has to come from a spokesperson for whatever the group is that's making these decisions. Um, the second thing is just I know the conflict of interest was discussed very briefly. I don't know the specifics at the steering committee uh, meeting, the, the only one they've had. And it was about David Frothingham. And if you look at the last two pages here, um, he is a professional disc golf player. He has made money this year playing disc golf. He has his own LLC. If you go to the last page, Green Mountain Disc Golf, He's list, this is as of today, he's listed as president. And um, I think he has a conflict of interest, uh, especially if he's, quote, professional. He's receiving money to play the sport. I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's appropriate as the vice chair of the steering committee. Or he could recuse himself from all issues related to that part of uh, park planning. But um, I don't know if I'm supposed to bring that up with the steering committee. I know you and I have gone back and forth about five members versus 10, and you know, it jumped out to 10, and I had issues around you know, the disabled population, and et cetera, et cetera. So where does that stand in terms of the, how that uh, steering committee is uh, comprised? Well, firstly, I think the only official vehicle that the select board is, has is the town website. I don't think any other other vehicles are appropriate. Well, that's, I, that's, I don't, no, I don't. that's not up to me. I'm just asking that right. the board put it on the agenda and come up with a town policy for yep. social media. But I think as of now, everything is really to go on the, on the town website. But I what happens but I think is... Should, I, I agree with you, Tom. I think there should be a policy. Individuals take bits of information and they run with it. And that's where the hysteria and misinformation begins and rumors. So I'd like to rein it into one legitimate source for this process. Again, for the sake of transparency. Man, so right now yeah. we don't have a policy, which for committees and commissions, so it's <laughs> something on the parking lot, we're discussing agenda topics later today that we can put on an agenda for the future. Um, so, no one's in violation of anything because it doesn't exist. So once something's in place, we can discuss that with commissions and committees and move forward. Um, and then in terms of conflict of interest, it seems, you know, going to the committee first. I'm not sure if there's a um, written protocol. There is for the town for, of Waterbury. For committees and commissions and what that right. chain of command is. So it would, it would be worth looking that up before we t either take action or recommend others to take action. So we should find out what that procedure or policy is and follow it instead of um, guessing. Guessing. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. <clears throat> and then we can. I concur with everything you said, Danny. Great. Any other comments? <clears throat> Would you say Steve is here to speak to the parks planning update, of which this is pertinent as an agenda item. So I'm happy to speak more to logistics to this particular project at that point, um, but heard on generally a social media policy, and as Danny said, it's right. on our future agenda list. Yeah. Okay. And we'll get back to Tom uh, when we get it on the agenda for discussion. That'd be great. Yep, absolutely. Um, when Steve presents, will it be any opportunity for public we usually allow questions, but it's right. at the discretion of the chair. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Tom. Any other public comment? If not, we're going to get on to the uh, bulk of the meeting. First item is the closing of Park Street and Rotarian Way on October 10th, 
2022 for an event. We have uh, Monica. I'm trying to. Yep. Okay. You get one try. <laughs> D. Giovanni. D. Giovanni. Oh, that was a little close. Thank, thank you, Monica. <laughs> if, if, if you could speak to this, uh, the, the reason for the closing, the event, et cetera, just give us some background. Sure. Um, and actually, we've decided not to have the streets closed. Um, but to give you a little more information about the event, um, I am a, a planner, an event planner. And I'm working for the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and I've been hired to uh, help produce an event to honor Senator Leahy for his 47 years of service uh, to Vermont downtowns. Um, we are going to have some music. There will be food served. There will be some tents set up. Um, the event will run from 1 to 5. And we'll be there, of course, earlier to get set up and probably not too much later. Um, we originally wanted the street closure because it's a family friendly event, but have since decided that with the date um, and the time of year that not quite sure how many small people will be there. And you have the beautiful playground there and the park. So we decided we don't really need the, the street closure. But we are still looking to have the parking spots on Riparian Way blocked off for accessible parking directly to the event, as well as for Senator Leahy's caravan. Uh, the main parking for the event will be across the street at the, at the state office complex. How many people do you expect? Um, with the weather and the time of year, it's a little tricky to guess. So it's a pretty broad range, somewhere between 150 and 250 people. Other questions of the board? Uh, do you need anything from us if you're not going to be closing a street? Well, Karen suggested that I, I come to the meeting it was kind of a last minute decision on Friday and she had already sent in the agenda and I asked her if I needed to attend and she said it was already there and that if you had any questions for me, it would be good for me to be here. So, um, you know, it, it maybe I don't know if I still if we need permission to use cones to block off the parking spots. I'm not clear on that. That was what I didn't know either. Well, we can approve it now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who yeah. else we need to. Yeah. Talk to you about that. I don't see a big problem. You know, at first I wondered why you were closing off because I thought if you're going to have a kids activity, well, the street would be not as good of a location as the, in the park. But well, you know, there was a suggestion to get um, like kids' toys, like big wheels and that kind of stuff from the daycare center. They have like a big. <laughs> collection and I thought that sounded like a great idea and then in hindsight if we have an hour of speakers and music then the sound of those toys might be I can make a racket. yeah <laughs> so it just kind of all the pieces kind of falling in at the wrong time but eventually got there so Melissa um, I will move to authorize the closure of the parking on Rotarian Way as outlined for the event on October 10th and I will say as a point of information, if there is alcohol, we need to receive that permitting. But we do have a meeting on October 3rd, so it could be approved at that point as needed. But that's my Yeah, opinion. you will either hear from me or the vendor. We are going to have a cash bar, and I'm hoping to speak with him tomorrow and get that all straightened out. So I'll uh, second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thank, thank you, Monica. Monica. Yeah, thank you so much. And I, maybe it's open to the public, so please stop by on the 10th if you're around. <laughs> so maybe see thank you then. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to discuss and consider the contract for the municipal manager. Does someone want to make a motion? Because this is a personnel issue that we will have to discuss in executive session. I move that we go into executive, executive session to uh, 
discuss the uh, contract with the new municipal manager. We have a second. I'll second it. Um, I'd also suggest that we try to keep it to uh, less than five or ten minutes. Let's say fifteen, just to give us. Some okay. Time. <laughs> I concur. If 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 with Roger's suggestion, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. I entertain a motion to leave executive session. Work. Second. Is there a second? Any second? Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> motion passes. That was just exiting executive session. Mm -hmm. and for exec we did not take any action. I never moved them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we moved. We're doing great. We're on top of everything. See how much more efficient that is? Yes. Yeah, okay. Shout out to that. Okay. Danny, the floor is yours. Well, I move to authorize the town of Waterbury to enter into an employment agreement with Thomas, Tom Light, um, as municipal manager for a term of two years and nine months. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations, Yay. we have a new town oh. manager. <laughs> we actually have a guest on the uh, Zoom, and it's actually Tom Lights, our new <laughs> town, ma to town manager to be. Uh, Tom, would you like to have the floor? and? Introduce yourself to folks of Waterbury. Sure. Uh, first off, thank you uh, very much. I'm really, um, really honored to have inspired your confidence to be the next manager. Um, Waterbury is a great town. I um, was really um, interested in applying here for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons was uh, how well the relationship has been between the manager and the select board and the EFUD board over the years. Uh, which tells me culturally things are really good here in Waterbury. Um, real excited to be a part of the community in the future, um, chomping at the bit to get started. And now that this is uh, more or less official, I'd like to start tomorrow if I could. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to be a presence before my official start date because I'm really excited here. Um, and I just want to thank everyone and I'm going to do my best and I'm going to give it um, an awful lot of effort. So I think, um, I think it's going to work out great for all of us. Um, and I think, uh, uh, I forget the exact number of months the contract is, but over many months towards the end, I think um, I'll be as excited uh, at that point in time as I am right now. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. We appreciate it. We're glad that we know the process was a little bit enduring. It was a little more of a marathon than it was a sprint, but we know we've gotten the right person. And I want to congratulate you and welcome you to Waterbury because I think you'll be a great addition to our town staff. And uh, I think great, great things are going to come of you. Okay. Hard act to follow when you're following Bill Sheplock, but I think sure. we found a worthy candidate. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. 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 You're, you're welcome to stay on or, in, or have a little champagne with the wife? <laughs> I can stay on a little bit. Unfortunately, I've got someone coming to pick up a wood stove, so he's probably going to need my help. <laughs> okay, we totally understand. Okay. Should we know like, that there's yeah, going yeah. to be a two-month overlap uh, with Bill Shepard? Yes. There will be for everyone who hasn't been involved in the process. Tom will be starting on October the 31st. He will be working with the current town manager, Bill Sheplock, until the end of the year. This will kind of get him informed of everything in Waterbury. And starting on January 1st, he'll become the official town, town manager. He'll actually be deputy town manager because technically by Vermont law, you cannot have two town managers at the same point. And just that you know, Lisa, I do have a bio, which I, I would be glad to put and, and a headshot for you. And, um, you know, we could, we could do that after, after post-meeting. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, and Mike, I'd just like to thank and acknowledge the members of the Municipal Manager Search Committee. We had the subcommittee that did the initial vetting. Mike and Danny were our reps and served us really well. We also had EFUD reps and reps from the Library Commissioner. And I'd also like to thank the five community members who also provided input on the finalists. I think everyone from all the boards ultimately had um, is really excited about Tom. We're excited to welcome him to Waterbury and just thank everyone for their work in the process. Um, Happy to have it out in the public today. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. If there's nothing further on the town manager, we'll move on to the next subject. Uh, we are. This next topic is consider proposal from Sullivan and Powers Professional Corporation to audit financials for the years 2022 to 2026. What's the board's pleasure? I'll offer, so if I, my memory, I will pull right. it up, but Bill Shuffle presented this previously. This was a five-year renewal. He particularly emphasized that he feels it's important to, also his text? No, this is nice. Um, to stay with the same firm, given the transition, so he's available. Um, we did get some follow-up data on percentage increases, which do exist, but were relatively modest. I believe the average, the highest year was a 3% increase. Um, but keeps the cost pretty fixed for the next five years and stays with the firm we know. So um, I would move to authorize the town to enter into the agreement um, for auditing services for the years noted. Thank you, Alyssa. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Chris. Any further discussion on the uh, auditors? It was a little bit of a bump in the road transition when we changed from Billy Acrimony to so, to Sullivan and Powers, um, and now that we're past that, and uh, kind of they know what we're a little bit about, and I think it's probably proven to stick with them and give them another five years. Yeah, it's always from working with very, you know, I used to work with a, a lot of different auditors, and changing auditors is always a very difficult thing. So, if you haven't had any substantial problems with an auditor, you know, you know, it's not like we're looking at a substantial increase in costs. It's more of a kind of a cost of living, you know, increase. Uh, it's good to stay. Yeah, well, initially, I was a little concerned about the, the rate increases, but uh, in actuality, they're they're not really increasing much at all uh, this coming year, and then there is a step increase uh, going forward. But uh, I agree that. Uh, it's nice to know that we've got somebody secured for five years that knows the town and knows our uh, finances. So uh, I'm ready to support it. Yep. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Next item to be discussed is the park planning study update. Steve? Okay. Great. So I'll, um, I'll get this started and then, um, Lisa, I know you were there and Mike, I believe you participated as well, so please chime in. And um, my idea is to keep this pretty informal, but to give you a brief update on the project. Uh, we had a uh, visioning workshop last Thursday uh, from five to seven. Uh, the consultant team was here and we had uh, the steering committee, we had um, about 30 people sign in. I think there were probably more than that who actually came. And um, Roger, I think you came by too, I didn't did you? By. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for, I remembered just My now. My gave me 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay, good. So um, the project is really uh, building up some steam, if you will. Um, we have a survey out that's online. It's uh, available in paper form. There are some paper copies right outside the door here. They're in the library as well. And uh, we've already had 155 complete surveys filled out. And the surveys uh, mimic the boards that were in the room here last Thursday. So we'll be able to take the data that we get from the surveys and meld it with the answers and the input that we got at the visioning event. And um, the consultant is going to synthesize that and um, basically come up with kind of a visioning concept. We're going to have a steering committee meeting in October, probably around the second week 
in October to go over that with the, the um, consultant. And then they're going to develop um, concepts. They're going to do uh, two concepts for the area around the ice center, and they're going to develop a um, kind of a conceptual management plan and recommendations for Hope Davy Park as well. And once we get that, um, that initial draft done, uh, we're going to hold another public meeting. It probably, that's probably going to be uh, late fall before we, we um, hold an actual uh, public meeting to get input on, on that um, concept, if you will. Uh, so there, there are going to be good opportunities. So there will be that opportunity for the public to get involved. We'll publicize that meeting widely, get the conceptual plan out. And then um, at that point, we'll take that input. The cons consultant is going to develop the draft uh, plan, study, master plan, uh, call it what you will. And, um, and then that plan, we'll make sure to present that to you and the EFUD commissioners in, in a public meeting. So that's basically how the project is going to, uh, is going to move forward. So I don't know. Did, go ahead, Roger. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, Tom Scribner uh, expressed concern about the ecological impacts of human activity, uh, particularly around Hope Davy. And I was wondering, how has, ha have they taken a look at those impacts and how has that impacted the, the study uh, up till present? Right, so um, the part of the consultant team is uh, Airwood Environmental. Mm -hmm. uh, Dory Barton is their principal who has done the uh, wetland delineation and was part of the site walk. Yeah. And she also did a delineation at the ice center. There's only one small wetland area there. Uh, we also had uh, Bill DeVos, who is the owner of uh, TreeWorks in Montpelier. He was at the site walk. Um, he's doing some evaluation of soil compaction and um, impact on the on the trees in the wooded areas um, mm -hmm. as a result of uh, activity <laughs> so that that information is all going to be uh, coming coming in as and part of the the management considerations um, we had a site walk with Shannon Morrison uh, the wetland uh, specialist I may have mentioned this before this was um, uh, previous to the start of the study and um, there are no uh, violations of the state wetland rules. There's a pretty extensive class two wetlands on the site. Um, so she went over um, the state guidelines for these types of activities in wetland, in and around wetland areas. And this is not the only disc golf course that is in and around wetlands. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, the boardwalks that are being used, the um, she talked about the vegetative cutting and uh, where uh, buffer areas, there should be no removal of woody material. So that type of thing is being um, incorporated into the, into the study. But her, her evaluation from a state wetlands rules perspective is that uh, the disc golf course is not in violation. They're generally following the guidelines for recreation facilities uh, within and around wetland areas. Okay. So. That's the way the study is addressing. So how this. does how does these this new proposal and all this um, vision uh, group in possible new proposals for the park increased activity? I mean, you're doing a study now based on current activity, but right. if that activity uh, increases, doubles or triples, mm -hmm. you know, how does that? Is there any consideration for that? being taken, taken into consideration as we move forward here? Well, I think we don't have the results yet, so I think it's premature to say no, I'm just saying that how that, that needs how to that be part of right. Right. So the, as we do move forward. Right. So one of the things that we'll be looking at is that um, reestablishing a nature trail at Hope Davy Park, and, and that was discussed both here in the visioning meeting and, and at the site walk. Um, the, the use of the disc golf course fluctuates. It, um, it really peaked during COVID, as did many recreation facilities. And our understanding is, you know, that has um, the, the intensity of the use has, has subsided some. But um, there, there really aren't any 
proposed facilities other than reestablishing the nature trail that has come out so far for Hope Davy Park. There is a proposal to um, do some renovation work on the skate park. The skate park group wants to keep the skate park there and in, in Hope Davy, right, and do some renovation work because it is popular and then establish a new one at the ice center area. But new facilities are primarily uh, proposed for the area around the ice center and that's going to be a big part of that concept plan and then master plan is how will that area accommodate uh, increased activity. But I don't think the master plan is going to propose any any increases in activity at Hope Davy Park. It's more of a management for current uh, facilities. Uh, ADA access is an important aspect for both areas, uh, especially at Hope Davy Park, reestablishing ADA access to the shelter, uh, other areas, the playground, other areas that um, you know should uh, be accessible. So that will be part of the study, certainly, how to get people with um, who are differently abled out so they can see ball games. And I think that all needs to be addressed um, in the no, study. I, I, my only concern was if there's going to be any additional build out in that those you know delicate areas that uh, mm -hmm. obviously usually when you refine a, 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 pro, a, pro, a project, make it better, you get more more use. More use and and uh, that's where the, the real impact's going to occur. So. Yeah, I don't think that's the intent of the study. I think it's to better manage facilities that are there and look at these areas like, <clears throat> look at issues like soil compaction in the wooded areas. Should there be a further adjustments to the course? Uh, you know, conflicts with neighbors. Some have been identified. How to address that? Screening, fencing, uh, additional planting. So, you know, it, I think it's more of those types of management um, right. aspects that are, are going to be um, discussed. You design to protect those delegates. Right, along, there's a hole along Thatcher Brook, you know, how should that area be handled? Um, so yeah, that, that's important. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I do have one. Okay. No, I was just going to uh, You mentioned that they're going to come up with a plan. Are there going to be like alternatives, like an A, B, or C plan? You know, some alternatives that, because Different plans may have different impacts, et cetera. And, you know, some. Just curious if there's, sure. there's going to be one plan or if there's going to be multiple, they're, they're looking at different plans that are conceivable. Right. So at the ICE Center, the discussion has been to have uh, two alternative plans okay. one involving leaving the access road where it is. Right. And, um, for instance, uh, that would could accommodate a couple youth soccer fields versus an adult, large adult field, versus um, moving that access road. So um, that will be two concepts for the park. Um, and there'll be two cost estimates done for the um, developing, relocating the road versus leaving it where it is and any additional paving that might be required. And then um, we'll be looking at funding sources for alternatives. Um, and matching up some private um, contributions with uh, like Land and Water Conservation Fund and um, mm -hmm. other kinds of uh, grant funding that could help fund uh, development in the future. Hope Davy. Hope Davy, um, I, I think there's going to be a list of recommendations. I, I don't know. Uh, it's a little different because we're dealing with a park that um, kind of other than reestablishing the trail and and Reestablishing ADA access. I mean, there's some discussion of like a pickleball uh, field, you know, some multi-use field aspects. So some comments like that have come up. But um, so I don't see. I think there may be alternatives as far as how to manage certain areas. You know, do we shorten hole five, which ends in the wooded area, and bring that uh, basket back into the field? I mean, there's going to be some alternatives for management. I think that will be discussed and um, recommendations for. Them. I sec just one second, Tom. And secondarily, I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, ADA <coughs> references. I know, especially in Hope Davy, uh, you know that was some in, in the in the question. And I, I guess someone who's formally been involved in 
you know, planning and contracts and stuff like that. I think it's really critical that town resources do have some sort of, you know, you know, there formerly was, you know, uh, at least access to the shelter. You know, I, I, it's always hard to make access everywhere, but, you know, I hope that's, I hope the consultant is being driven that, you know, we do want, you know, this to be accessible and to, to the community. Yeah, that comment has come up. It came up at the visioning meeting. I discussed it with uh, Patrick Olstead, the principal on the project. So I think they're very aware and they have a lot of expertise in that area of being landscape architecture and planning firm. Does the board have any, I know Tom. Um, we're gonna be discussing ARPA funding uh, in an upcoming meeting. And I'm wondering if you anticipate any requests on uh, ARPA funds. Yeah, that's a good question, Roger. Um, I don't know that relocating the road for the ice center park may be a good topic because I know infrastructure uh, is a big part of that and it's expensive. So um, that's the big ticket item I can think of that might fit in well with that. I'm not, I am not an expert in ARPA funding at all, so um, I'll look forward to learning more about that. But that's, that's one project which I can envision. Um, we need to relocate the road into the material storage area. That could be part of that project, and that could uh, pave the way, so to speak, for... Oh. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't resist that one. Thank you. Uh, you know, that could, that could um, make way for the, um, you know, the uh, development that could be an, a private nonprofit investment as well in, in facilities. We've heard a lot of comments that we don't want to redo the road if it's possibly going to be moved. So that's something that right, right. That's what happened before. It was paved and it sort of uh, set it in, in asphalt there. So I think we want to yep. make sure we make the right moves there. Definitely, okay. definitely. Any other questions before I, uh, Elizabeth? Well, I just have three quick comments if we're on this topic, and I'll try and be concise, but I just wanted to say we hired SE Group because they're a professional consulting firm that does this type of work, and in the portfolio of work that they showed when they responded to the request for proposals that we approved, they showed like South Burlington, which again is a, another community in Vermont with even more residents that's balancing how you manage these types of things. So I think the goal is that they're bringing some expertise as someone who thinks about current and future use. Some of the tasks we had in that is identify significant issues that need to be addressed if the use of existing recreational facilities is continue and carrying capacity for current and future facilities. So I think your point of, all right, what's it at now? What's it at with the future? Um, so I just wanna say, I think the goal is that we're leveraging that expertise. It is coming back to us and to others to, to you know, cause yes, maybe there are community specific concerns, but, um, and I did just wanna speak into the steering committee. We don't have to re-adjudicate everything, but I would say the goal is we have a number of members who come, who were picked for the committee specifically because they have really specific viewpoints. So we have someone who wants a skate park. We have someone who is Capital Soccer, which is a private nonprofit that has developed in our community. Um, we have someone from the Recreation Committee and just recognizing that the goal was not to say no one has an opinion, but that to say we've created a portfolio, so to speak, of a number of different um, folks and perspectives in the community to try and help provide perspective. But again, it will also come to us and we welcome additional viewpoints as well. But just that's how we came to that, not saying that no one would have a point of view, but that we would have a range of points of view. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks. Anything else before we go to Tom? I just got a couple of points. One is a, a well-designed park is going to be the best of an all-inclusive community on, you know, the best use of it. It will best represent an all-inclusive all community. Um, that's number one. Number two is ever since that park was purchased with a conservation grant, the taxpayers have never had a chance to have a voice in what they actually want there. There's never been a vote on that park on, on this or that or how to use the land. I'm wondering if there could be two options, and then maybe it goes on the town meeting ballot of one or the other. And then the third thing is, if they're going to do a path, it's not going to be cheap. So how's, where's the money going to come from to, to do this once it's decided, okay, we're going to do this? 
Chris, how much is a is a thousand foot, you know, two thousand foot, ten foot wide path that's you know firm and it's not going to wash out? Well, I can't without seeing some type of design. <laughs> I can't speak to that specific, but I can tell you right now, I was putting some bills out today for my own business, and I was just floored by the increase in aggregate costs and such. There you go. So that's absolutely some, mind yeah. blowing. Has to be some consideration of how this is going to happen. But as was said, we might we might consider ARPA funds use, which could be a, you know, <coughs> that's part of the puzzle. And I think the goal is to have an approach for planning. I mean, we did have I think almost thirty thousand. I don't have the budget in front of you. Thousand dollars of capital improvements for the parks program that for a variety of reasons didn't happen this year, but that was built as part of a balanced budget that was presented to voters at town meeting. So in my mind, when you have the outcome of something that says these are some possibilities and this is what they will cost, that better allows us to have a conversation about which are most important on what timeline and how we will pay for them. Steve spoke to some other funding in addition to ARPA. Yeah, I think I was going to give a similar um, answer that um, you know, any large budgeted projects are going to have to come to town meeting, I think, uh, for a vote um, through the budget process. So I think uh, this is really the beginning of a master planning project that will give us some cost basis and get, let the, the select board, EFUD commissioners, the um, others in the community the chance to uh, make some recommendations. And then we can look at budgeting, look at uh, possible like ARPA funding, other grant funding. Uh, how that would be matched and um, and so on. So I think that's really the purpose of the study to lay to lay that out. But ultimately, any, any larger projects are going to have to get um, yeah, that, budgeted and I mean, just like a grader, go to the, town. the taxpayers have to say we'll pay for a grader. So you, I'm saying I'd like to see a taxpayer voice in, you know, what they want, you know, right. on paper what they want there. Why we approve a budget every year? Yeah, yeah, and it goes I'll to town meeting. <laughs> one only, one other note here. I just, I, I'd hate to get into speculating about where ARPA funds are going to be going just yet because we really haven't even sat down and put together a list of priorities. priorities yeah. In, yeah. In, in, you know, yeah, before we start, want to get a sense as to what might be on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that, it's not because we haven't been thinking about it, but especially with the, we're going to be having a transition in town management with a new town manager. We want to get him, you know, be, to be part of that process. I think it's really important, you know, versus, you know, we have something. So I think that will be a, a very key thing. Yeah, and we've been keeping Bill very involved in this project right. in terms of uh, a lot of detail. So. If before we end this agenda, I'm, Tom, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Steve Lotspeech. I should look at the owl, right? And I'm the planning, <laughs> I'm the planning and zoning director, and um, I'm also a landscape architect. I've been here almost as long as Bill, but not quite. I think I'm five, five years short of Bill's tenure here. But uh, at any rate, I look forward to meeting you in person and working with you. Sounds great, Steve. And Chip in St. Albans has told me a lot about you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Did you say Chip? OK, well, I've known Chip since he was at UVM, and he's a great guy. You're fortunate to have him. Yeah. So anyway, oh, does anybody have anything okay, else? Unless if we don't have anything else, let's move on. Thank you so much. Thank OK, you. you're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Steve, for that first support. Oh, and the survey's open until the 30th. There's yeah, paper the 30th out there and, the and in the library, and it's online. Okay, our next topic is discussion uh, revitalizing Waterbury Agreement for Economic Development Director. Uh, I'm happy to speak to it if you'd like, Mike. Unless sure, you if you prepared. can, that would be sure. great. Uh, that um, so really simple, there's not action needed, but just wanted to discuss it for the public to hear as well. Um, Bill had sent us the former MOU for the past number of years. We've um, put on the ballot for the voters to approve um, a special appropriation for economic development director salary um, with RW. I think we all see and understand and appreciate the value of having that position. So barring not wanting to move forward with that MOU, um, we don't really need to, to take any action. The only action taken would need to be if we decided not to extend that MOU again. Um, it automatically re-extends? 
Um, so what's going to happen is Karen uh, Nevin will come to a later meeting um, and propose the budget for us, and then we move forward with, with creating that MOU based on the budget right. she presents. So we don't take any action until we've got those numbers from her and, and have Bill, Bill here with us. But um, the deadline's approaching where we would have to let her know we wouldn't be entering into that, so we just wanted to um, make it public that we're not uh, mixing that. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Um, so I, don't, I don't know if we need it, but I'll move that we uh, extend our agreement with we our We don't, agreement. no, no action. We, just we don't have taken action. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so in the past, we've had current up, or reasonably current updates on how that position has benefited the town of Waterbury, and we haven't had one in some time. Is that something that we sure. might want to yes. consider seeing or hearing? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious to know, I mean, this position costs the town X amount a year. I just kind of like to see where we're getting for our money. Um, right. Well, we can ask here and if it's, you know, to what degree it's benefiting the town. Uh, yeah, Karen so I think, up. yeah, Karen will speak to that when she comes. But, Chris, maybe if we wanted to have more of a mid-year update, we could just request... Um, and I can't remember. I say, so Mark, so Mark did provide a written update to all of us in August via yeah. email. August, that yeah. was mm -hmm. um, that update. But but if we wanted like to present that yeah, in person, if we, we wanted, because um, I'm up for more regular. And also thinking about coordination. You know, again, in full disclosure, mostly for Tom's benefit, I was in this position. But um, this notification is because it's really weird to take a job and then be like, oh, this job might not be funded. So it's, yeah, so, so it's a six month notification window in case the town decides not to renew it. Um, and I agree, I think updates always make sense. And also thinking about just for record, like revitalizing Waterbury has an economic development committee. It's called the Waterbury Area Development Committee. And at one point that existed and there was a town economic development committee I think at that point it was decided that that was kind of redundant. So exactly. just the RW one lived on, but in thinking about, you all know I love boards and committees, <laughs> um, what various boards and committees are doing and thinking, that to me is another group that it might be worth like, if they really like or hate something we or another board or committee are doing, having that regular conversation and communication makes sense. Thank you, Alyssa, that really adds something to the conversation. So. We'll, uh, we'll have more information on the RW agreement when um, Karen comes to us. Yep, and I just, um, I was in touch with Karen to let her know, and so she, what she's gonna do is reach out to Bill when she's ready to be put on the agenda yeah. to come in. I was gonna speak with her at the RW business mixer, but it was the same time as the visioning thing, so it kind of, couldn't be in, couldn't be in two places at one time, so. I have, I have to speak to her about a non-related issue, so I'll get in touch with her and have her get in touch with Bill to uh, get on a future agenda. Okay. Next topic is discuss and approve the structure of the Waterbury Area Housing Task Force. Mm -hmm. Alyssa. With apologies, let me just say, I know the phrase, take space, make space. Tonight is not a good Alyssa Johnson make space at a select board meeting, so apologies to all. Here we go. Um, that being said, as the housing enthusiast, um, we have actually already talked about this, so I have a printed copy. Um, there's a couple extras here in the room, and Karen, I did email you, so if anyone needs it electronically. If you flip to the back on background information, on June 20th, we all said, we should have a housing task force. Um, and this was for a variety of reasons that we all have noted just in terms of municipal trends. And we also had the more recent presentation from Revitalizing Waterbury about the specific um, housing task force they had done. Um, in follow-up conversation, housing, housing study, thank you. Um, in follow-up conversation with the Planning Commission and others, it was also noted this is something the town has done in the past with previous housing commissions. Um, so we all, you know, we had a unanimous motion to create this committee and then said we kind of need to work out the logistics. Is Steve still here? Mm -hmm. I did meet with Steve, who has now left, to talk about it a little. So really the goal is that we come away with um, a more final structure so we can start advertising. Um, so this is a draft and welcome edits and discussions. Um, I did say 12 members, which is like kind of big, um, but we can discuss the set folks we had talked about was a select board rep, an EFUD representative, 
Planning Commission revitalizing Waterbury. We then had discussion about additional folks, so downstreet, affordable housing, private development, energy efficiency. Dan, I think you had mentioned homelessness and other communities. So what I've proposed here is that we would have essentially four designees from specific boards and committees, but then that all the members are appointed by us, the select board, but that we do our best to balance folks who bring these various backgrounds we've noted, recognizing that some folks might wear two hats or we forgot to include them on this list, or, um, and so that we just include ask that folks not just say they're interested, but why they're interested and what perspective they think they would bring to the committee. Um, and again, I left who we're sending that to in the date <laughs> blank, <laughs> subject to us all discussing it. Um, but this would be the thought around moving forward. And again, this is a draft, so welcome edits on any of it. Um, I do, there's a vague sentence about municipal staff. Steve sa has said as planner that he would be interested in participating and supporting this group, but obviously we're not directly his boss, and so I want to just be sensitive around that. But he has said to me he's interested. Fantastic. Do you have a sense of how often this task force would meet? No, good question. Um, I would envision monthly. I would also say in the purpose, I just, the purpose as stated in this draft is that it's to advance the goals of our municipal plan related to housing, but then there's this more vague engage in other areas of work related to housing as agreed upon by the group, just recognizing maybe we have a data enthusiast, maybe we have more of a planning enthusiast than me, like if, if there's a specific place folks want to go, um, that would be, I would defer to the people who want to participate versus feeling like we as a board have to dictate it. My question is similar to Roger's. Uh, do you envision a period of time this task force will be in existence? Is it going to be like forever or, or I, I know we're not going to solve housing, you know, in a year or two. That's just, you know, just people are just not realistic. But is there any kind of thought on, is this kind of an ongoing kind of task force or Yes, so to try to answer both of you, I would envision monthly, that might be ambitious, but I'm open to discussing it. And I think both, I would envision, as you said, definitely longer than a year, just giving yeah. plan, I mean, you were in the housing world, oh, <laughs> planning and long-term. Um, 31 years. You know, uh, so there's examples too, I should say, from, yeah, the state finance housing authority. A lot of folks just establish it as a standing committee. Um, another piece for us is like terms. So Essex, I think, right. like three or five year terms. I was looking at examples. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one other piece that I didn't spell out, but maybe and we should talk through. Yeah, I think we can talk through it, but I also, and I also think that if we, if a task force is put together and there are representatives from these boards, et cetera, that they can have autonomy in making those decisions and establishing terms and how they want to run, they, you know, look at other towns and, and see how things are run. So. In some ways, if we want to help guide it, we can, and also, you know, we can allow the folks who are really thrilled about this work to decide what what might work best for yeah. for them as a group. To me, in response to Roger's comment, to me, monthly seems to be kind of aggressive, and you may burn people out that way, either bi-monthly or quarterly. Again, this is going to be a more of a fact finding, and there's going to be probably work behind the scenes and doing things where you know, do you have to meet every month? You know, that's that's sometimes a question. You know, I, you know, you don't want to have to have a meeting just because some meeting is scheduled. Okay. So that's why if I have any kind of, you know, I think it would be better, you know, some sort of a less frequent than monthly meeting. And would this be a town official committee that they have to be appointed? Given that we have said it's a task force of the select board and right. we would appoint them, then yes, it would be a town, or at least I think it would fall under the so they would town to committee vote. and okay. need to follow open meeting law. Okay, great. Any further questions? If not, 
What do we, I mean, is there, I will say like, this is really, is 12 too many? Should we start with 10 and be less ambitious? Like this is the, I know we don't normally like to, you know, edit in a meeting, but I think this is one like we as a group can decide what Where are the right. other four? So I had four dictated from the boards and then that would leave a balance of eight, but we could make eight that within four and six. Yeah, eight that are essentially community members, hoping that in selecting the community members, we're also checking these other boxes. I mean, this could be four to six instead of eight. To me, bigger boards sometimes have problems operating. You know, I would be, you know, 12 seems pretty ambitious. You know, either eight at the most 10 would seem to be, you know, because most of our town boards are probably five member boards. Yeah. You, you know, again, this is a big, chunk that they're going to be doing so you may have to you know divide up some issues but i just think 12 is a lot what do you mean by big chunk can you elaborate a little bit more on that i think that there's there's a whole bunch of issues that this housing task force is going to face and i think you know to get individual members to maybe take projects among you know again their price subject to open meeting law like everything else so you can't meet 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 out, outside but to be able to do stuff put together inf information there's going to be a whole bunch of different topics that they're going to you know everything from you know mobile home parks to you know there's a number of things they, they may be, be tackling you know there's two problems that i see here with this is well, the first problem is the time span that it takes to, number one, accumulate uh, data, and number two, the length of time to implement it, by that time it's obsolete. Right. Uh, you know, affordable housing is just a, a really difficult issue to, to try to solve. I don't know that it can ever be solved. Uh, my biggest fear, and like always, and I'll tell you right up front, is in, I can't speculate now on the impact, but what would the impact be to, to our tax rate, if any? Um, I'll just express that up front that, uh, you know. I don't think if, if for some reason this task force turns to the town for tax dollars in some form, that, that's a huge concern for me. I don't necessarily see them maybe coming to the town, you know, maybe some money, but I see more, to me, you could develop affordable housing a lot more on the regulatory end. You know, zoning would be the prime, you know, to me that's the prime area where we need to develop, you know, places that are applicable for housing. Then it's really some outside sources Groups that are already, you know, Ever North and Down Street, and there are there are a zillion housing groups out there that are experienced housing developers, and they could make things work. And it's not always, you know, I I've seen a lot of studies done, and everyone thinks oh, affordable housing it's going to increase the town tax rate. There have been many studies done that show actually it has a very neutral effect on, on the town tax rate. You know, everyone you know, talks that they're worried about their property values going down. Actually, what's more in the know is that when a, the housing that we have been developing in the state of Vermont that's affordable housing actually improves neighborhoods, not de declines neighborhoods. Everyone has this impression of the, you know, housing that's developed down in Mississippi or some other, you know, poor locale, which reflects poorly upon the community. That's not happening really in Vermont. The affordable housing community is very responsible on developing good quality housing. It's better than a lot of private developers. And that's, you know, so it does have a positive impact on the community and a positive impact on the tax rate. And I don't know that Chris was even saying that. I would just say in general too, just to, we have housing goals from the plan, right. which I put right. on the back is ensure the availability of safe, decent and affordable housing for all current and future Waterbury residents. 
So yes, I understand the word affordable is in that sentence, but what's affordable to you, me, and a millionaire are all very different things. So to me, that could be a lot of different types of houses. And I want to just say, I hear Chris in that. Yes, it's a committee, and it is a committee that could at some point in the future make an ask of the select board. And so I completely understand and respect that. I think there is important enough work that needs to be done and work that can be done without requiring funding, like zoning, as Mike mentioned, or even just like, you know, coming up with, okay, what is the situation and what might we need in terms of meeting Waterbury's needs that would not be happening but for a group. So I think it's important to move forward with, I certainly am not, at least personally, if I was to be on this, going in with the goal to do something that would raise taxes. I'm not going to preclude it from happening in the past. Who knows what the group's going to do. But I think it's important to do now, and I think there is important components that could have zero impact on, in terms of a direct ask to the select board. Mm -hmm. And maybe some positives, as Mike was saying, yep. if you can help support grandless growth development. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that this, this study is unnecessary. I'm just saying that, that they've got a huge uphill climb. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> this is not an easy Forever. question in, in today's conditions. You know, yeah. And, and uh, Yeah, and another piece to think, Sorry. thanks Roger. Another piece to think about is that, you know, there's the big picture, right? We, there's this huge problem and like you say, we're not, we're I don't think we're solving it in, in this, <laughs> this task force. But there are lots of small things to do, like look at comparable sized towns and see what's been effective or ineffective for them. Things that like the five of us just don't have time or capacity to do and Steve doesn't right. have capacity to do. So just having folks with some expertise, with some passion and enthusiasm to like reach out and talk to other towns and see what's happening um, to do some, you know, data collection isn't perfect, but it's really helpful and it can inform decisions. So. They're not just trying to, you know, eat the apple whole, but just also take some small bites and and move things forward a little bit at a time. And getting some folks who are excited to do that and have some capacity, I think, is is really the only way we're going to be able to make progress. Thanks for that input. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say uh, the reason that I, I moved this uh, initially back in June was that uh, we have. Uh, these goals in the municipal plan mm -hmm. to do housing and nobody is really assigned to implement mm -hmm. those goals and so I think that this is a good opportunity to identify a group that can integrate both the public and private sectors uh, to, to address this which they all are doing uh, maybe independently but this is a way to look at it more comprehensively and uh, you know this town really does need young families, and right now young families can't afford to buy housing here, can't find housing here. Uh, and uh, so if we're going to have schools and students, uh, how are we going to make that happen? Well, uh, to your point, my cousin was in here a few months ago, if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, and he's got, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's got, a, can't, can't forget her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got that project up in the center that he's been wanting forever to put affordable type housing in there. Uh, he, he might be a good person to speak to um, in respects to this. And quite honestly, if I had the five minutes of extra <laughs> time in my life, I wouldn't mind being on this committee as well, you know, because my background is 40 years of history in this business. And, that's why it's so critical to have this group because we just don't have the time here to tackle every issue and it's kind of delegate and if someone has you know, real interests I would encourage them to consider being on the task force so to move this forward uh, could we suggest that the, we establish this task force um, and uh, open up uh, uh, solicit uh, interest in people being Members, I would think that based on the discussion tonight, we'd want to meet every other month uh, rather than monthly. Yep, that's a great place to start. And if subcommittees want to meet more often, I mean, they can. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But not, not push the the meeting part of it mm -hmm. uh, just because meetings take time. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also propose Danny's amendment of made up of up to ten members. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also recognizing if we have, I would say like. For your point, because if there's one day you can make it come, you know, mm -hmm. give the. Like, I think we don't need to be. You know, we want to have a structure on paper for that purpose, but we could be 
flexible as needed with regards to yeah. you know who's there. Um, Karen, I don't want to put you on the spot. Is it okay if people email you with interest, or would you prefer that go to me or another board member so as to not clog your inbox? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to just say I'm pretty overwhelmed. Great. Yeah, I'm happy to have you not stuff. be the contact. Yeah. That's yeah, great. That's lot. that's why we wanted to ask. That's why it's his person, not a name. <laughs> um, I'm happy to receive and, and save them until we are ready to great. So take action. Address uh, their interest to uh, Danny. And then what, uh, by what date do we want to? That was going to be a question for us to discuss. I know we have agendas next. I'm opening my phone. It's today the 19th. Already. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's insane. Uh, by 15th of October. What if we say Friday? We have a meeting on the 17th. So let's say that Friday the 14th. Sure. Is that enough time? It's almost a month. Yeah, yeah. October 14th. And if they come in over the weekend, I won't reject them. Right. <laughs> you can pick up people. Yeah, it's great. Um, are yeah. we good with the questions? We can ditch three, but do we think we want to ask questions? I know that's not how we've always done boards or committees in I've, the past. I'm all for these, personally. I'm not a municipal expert, but you do we be. do we do we need <laughs> any? Kind of authority to create an, another kind of board. I, I know. I don't know if anyone. Anyway. <laughs> Bill would well, be Bill the one. Can, I mean, he did in the past yeah. meetings. Bill was yeah. here for this meeting. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is all. Like a task force. We don't have yeah. We're not. We're not giving so, them spending or regulatory right, right. authority. We're saying it's a it's, group that's a doing something group. in a municipal plan, which we authorize. And we will consult before the first meeting. You know, we're over a month out, so. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, Bill, Bill sanctioned this on, at multiple meetings, so. Tom, do you know that answer? <laughs> <laughs> As I speak, you're just creating a committee, you need three votes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> three votes. I think we, we got it. Might be able to get more than that. Um, <laughs> and I will say other, the good last notes that um, other committees have done this, and there's some resources for the state, so that's likely something this group will review up front just around, as Danny said, what other towns have done. Um, and I did want to also say we have a town energy plan committee that's doing this well, per Roger's point, because their goal was we have stuff in an energy plan, no one's doing it. And I will say Duncan McDougall has done a great job chairing that. I think right. the group meets quarterly. I was on it super briefly when I was still at RW. And it was just a good way to say, like, can you research folks? You know, they did like a whole energy assessment of the sewer plant. Like, like <laughs> stuff that never would have happened. But Cynthia Parks was on the committee as an EFUD rep and helped facilitate that connection. So hopefully go. All right, to Danny. By October 14th, Karen, would it be okay to post this on the town website? Oh, sure, yeah. If we I'll give you that. language, yeah. we can, it sounds like. Okay. Um, so, Alyssa, you're tasked to be the housing task force maestro. If you all are good with that, I guess you, I, no I, I'm not going to make a motion for myself. If someone wants to I'll, I'll move, move to approve this structure as we discussed, with the timeline outline and appoint me as the rep, I would be happy to serve as the rep, but ah, I'm not going to do that for myself. <laughs> I'll, I'll move that we appoint Alyssa as uh, our rep on this uh, newly created uh, Waterbury Area Housing Task Force and uh, ask her to move forward with the solicitation of uh, interested members. And in that motion, do we need to also We should have a second a first. Approve. Okay. Any I'll second. Okay, thank you. <laughs> should we, do we need to amend the motion to approve the composition? Um, as well, or does that need to be? Uh, does that, I don't know if that has sure. to be. Uh, with uh, uh, up to 10 members uh, as outlined in this uh, briefing. I'll second the amended motion. Love it. Hey, any further discussion on the amended motion and second? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Thanks, all, and thanks, Danny, for being willing to receive. Love emails. collecting emails. Thank you. <laughs> Next to last is discuss agenda topic and schedule for future select board meetings. This is the big one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got forty-five minutes. <laughs> forty-five. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just start with the elephant in the room of ARPA, and I I propose that we 
find a time to create a special meeting to discuss ARPA rather than trying to fit it into a scheduled board meeting. Um, <laughs> and just for information, just in this, I'm not trying to be annoying, but for baseline, we have, this is shocking, six regular meetings left. So October 3rd, October 17th, November 7th, November 21st, December 5th and 19th, if I'm correct. Yep. Those are our standard first and thirds. Right. Um, and as we just outlined earlier, Tom will be joining us for the last four. So just in considering some of this. Mm -hmm. Some things that may or may not want to be in November, December, as opposed to October. Yeah, typically, I think. I forget I if hunt. it's after after December thirty first or into January when we start meeting weekly because of the budget season. Is it December or January? I forget January. whether it's. And if Bill's helping with the budget during the overlap, that would put some pressure on December. But. Right. So what if a, what about a November special meeting? In the first three weeks of November. Other than the two meetings that already exist in a November? Spe yeah, a special okay. meeting, not in our meeting. Is that doable? Do you hunt on November? I was going to say, I'll have to zoom in on that uh, one from the name. So hopefully, with any luck, if I can complete my list of work in front of me. Uh, I'm out of here at the end of October. I mean, October is doable. We, we could also invite Tom to see if he's available to join us for a meeting. I think that's virtually. really critical that Tom's yeah. part of those discussions because he'll be working with us to develop ARPA plans long term. Well, to speed things up, should each board member think about these three things that may fit into that list and boil it down, or how do you want to handle that? As far as priorities, um, well, we could have maybe each one of us for the next meeting just have maybe priorities that we think are important for our function. Mm -hmm. That I say that was my question around. Uh, just to clarify, are you envisioning this as a public input special meeting, like, or just uh, us as a board? And I mean, it would obviously public would be welcome, but I was imagining it as us as a board, so that we could come up with ideas and then also discuss a method of potentially soliciting public input. I think we would I think it would be a disaster if we just opened up random without See, I mean, having that's discussion. what I was envisioning yeah. in October, which is why no. I wanted to declare. No, a discussion amongst the board and Bill um, mm -hmm. to discuss some top priorities, to discuss some potential big spending and then also talk about and refine a, a method of, of soliciting input. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. good. See, if I recall we had one point four million we gave 100000 to the ICE Center. Yep. Uh, EFUD didn't take the 600000 so right. we should still right. be at 103, 1.3. We got 50 to CV Fiber, and then we have that 90 oh. hanging out on the highway that I keep asking about. But <laughs> hopefully we don't go over too much. And the 76 that we pledged to uh, the, the ambulance. ambulance. Ambulance, right. So it is doing it down a little. Well, yeah. not still only. Right. So we're down a little bit from our total. So the 17th, I guess, is there other things? So you're saying Danny 7th, or, or we could do later October potentially, as because so Chris can be here. Well, I was, person. yeah, I was saying, I'm still, I still wasn't saying during our meeting on the 17th, I still think. Right, so after. Yeah, anytime during October so that Chris could, I think it would be really good to have you yeah, in person. I could be on. Um, and then if we have a date available, I think we could extend an invitation to Tom and see if he would be available, even via Zoom for Tom. Yeah, you just said the Okay. Try. Um, so you want to pitch a date? <laughs> Can um, are there any nights for folks that are fully off limits? Can we knock that off first? October 4th, Tuesday is the only absolute no for me. Thursday is good for me. Are or are not? Oh, yeah, yeah. not October 24th. Okay. <laughs> for, uh, Wait, um, you said not good. They are good. They are good, I'm sorry. Yeah. So a Thursday, um, how? So, the 20th? 20th. October 20th? October 20th works for me. You could? 
What a guy, huh? Thank you. Um, Thursday, I will just say for public information that was the 51 South Main Street vote. Oh, no, but it's you five met at 5 p.m. and oh. there was a con conflict with the fire station, so they rewind it. So <laughs> that's fine with me. I'm just stating for public record. Okay. So they, did they change it already? I or believe no? they rewind it for the 24th. 24th. Yes, meeting Thank at you. 5 p.m. today. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, 20th works for me. I'm okay. Wow, look at this schedule. Okay. <laughs> October so, 20th. Thursday, October 20th. And we could review the agenda at the meeting on the 17th, so that on the 20th we... Yeah. Do you wish to have that it, yeah. yeah, do you have it available? Yeah. <laughs> I will look online. Yeah. Check the calendar and stuff. Yeah. Thank you. So it wasn't planning to use this room? So. No, it looks good. Yeah. Okay. Oh. September Special, Special meeting, ARPA. And um, I can send, like, a sort of outline of what the agenda might look like, you know? Okay. <laughs> well, and I'm saying we could even, like, if, if you want to do. Oh, you mean well, talk about the action. Now on the 17th, if you had, like, it Her, would be wonderful Her. if you're willing to yeah, draft. Yeah, totally. Yeah, on the 17th. Agenda. Got it. I got you. So I'm adding on the 17th draft agenda review agenda for our Okay. Um, we had... Um, I believe Vermont State Police reports was suggested as a November or December. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. What time do you wish to have that? Seven. Meeting? Yeah. Oh. Right. I, just, I need to get on the calendar. Yeah. Seven p.m. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. No sense in breaking the mold. <laughs> what? <laughs> what no. What other time you show up? <laughs> Be an hour late. <laughs> uh, seven thirty. They threw me off the other night. Yeah, the, um, Bill had suggested that he invite the uh, Vermont State Police uh, Lieutenant White uh, uh, during our first meeting in November, which I believe is the seventh, so that uh, Tom okay. could participate and uh, get there. Is that okay? Uh, I know you had a question. That works. First one in November. No, Chris, that, I mean, we, like, yeah, we can change it, but that's what uh, that's what Bill suggested. With, um, the DAs too. Right. Yeah, I was hoping to still do that at some point. I don't know if the you move it up. If the election is. Uh, oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, because. Right. Resituated yeah. every, you know, the chess game. Mm -hmm. Who was who? Oh, do you think with that shutting up? That we shutting up in here. And I don't know that that makes any difference at this point if we had it prior to the election. I don't know. It's, uh, I'm just interested to hear a little bit about the other side of the coin. In fact, when you were all talking about Lieutenant White coming in and this and that, I, whether it was today or yesterday, I was thinking to myself, I want to talk to them about the difficulties they're being faced with, not just what they're doing for the town, but what are you, what are you guys up against now? With, mm -hmm. with, you know, yeah, you had mentioned the drug issue. That you're more about. so about yeah, how their hands are tied, and is it being is it becoming more difficult for them to to prosecute to and, and solve the problems yeah. under the, today's circumstance? You know, because I know there's huge shortages in law enforcement right now. Yeah. Do we have a lot? Do we have already items for October seventeen? I don't know that we do. Would that, I wonder if that would work. I mean, I don't know if it would work for them, but we could extend the invitation for that. I don't have any problems moving it up. So will you? I can communicate with Bill. Perfect. Uh, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I was just We're not going to want to go I think it was really oh. about Tom, because he oh. has a relationship oh. Oh. with oh. Oh. Lieutenant oh. White oh. as oh. executing oh. our contract I for police yeah. services. So okay. I think part of it is oh. developing that relationship. So I do want to be respectful of how many <laughs> pre-employment asks we're no. making. Um, OK. So I was going to say December 5th, but I know it's been on our agenda for a while. So that's well, a, a, a while away. I think that, I mean. Is a month gonna change? I mean, how much difference is a month to make sure we're all here? We can also, I mean, for December open, let's ask the 17th. I just wanna, but I, I think that's why Bill made that request. I don't, I mean, that's a lot. 17th of October is one of the rare days I can't make it. Okay, great, easy. easy. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it easy. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> gonna be in the Adirondacks hunting? Good for you. We, we, well, 
this violates everything else we've talked about, but we can do it the 20, unless you insist that we only discuss our bad. Then. Assuming Lieutenant White would be a value. How long do we expect to The that problem is it could go on. Yeah, and I just... Brainwave. No, I support yeah. protecting that. I just felt like... It just feels said. like a four-hour meeting in the making. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, and, and like a lot of high emotional energy intensity items. I mean, I think, Chris, if you if you yes. feel like your participation via Zoom isn't isn't really satisfactory, then let, then it seems like December 5th might be the best alternative. I might be back by December 5th. Oh, uh, That's nice. Yeah, no, if not, we can do it in November and do it again. That's what I'm wondering. If I just want to honor that, like, you've requested this on the agenda, and so we want yeah. to make sure we have yeah, the speakers here looking forward to. Well, let's do it December 5th. I always prefer to be here in person, you know. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, do we want to move forward with Lieutenant White for November 7th? Because we've discussed other. See, how long will it really take for discussion with Lieutenant. I mean, even if we get into the weeds a little bit. An hour? I mean, it's it's sort of a big okay. thing because, you know, they are the only law enforcement in town. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just two. Okay. Yeah. Could we, do I think that's the least we, we could, could cap it. I know, I or hear, can I hear, we, or we could start early and do Arba first and, and have him after. Or vice versa, have yeah. him first, have him at six if we can start at six. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> or start at seven. I, and I guess, like, my, I think we need a solid two hours to discuss both ARPA priorities, get input, mm -hmm. and then if we're talking about soliciting public feedback, like, that's going to be it a long conversation. So I think we need a solid two hours for that. Okay. And then if we want to block one hour for Lieutenant White and then somebody gets to be the bad guy and set a timer. That's a did. standard three hour meeting. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> we're prepared for it. But to your point, do we want to start at six for some for that particular meeting? Um, if we can, if Lieutenant White can, and if Tom can. So there's a lot of moving parts, I think, to That might on. work better for the Lieutenant, because a lot of times he's probably on some sort of a regular schedule, and he'll probably just be coming from the barracks, and I bet you that will work better for him. But that, and not, not to want to jinx the process here, but if it did happen to run over, if we started at six, wouldn't be the end of the world. Right. Yeah. Who right. wants to ask? So the other big is Bill Shevlock and right. Lieutenant White. So right. who's making those asks? So Roger said he would reach out to Bill, and yeah. then I think Bill would reach out to Lieutenant White. I Great. Think is the okay. chain. And you'll also, so special meeting on the 20th. Karen is 6 p.m. <laughs> okay, now. Okay. And then Tom, would 6 work for you? I don't know what your day, yeah. and it, yeah, right. even, I'm sorry. Six. Okay, oh, this, so. This is more efficient now. I like the in the room. We're going to. First, connect with Bill Sheplick, uh, but the intent would be to invite Lieutenant White at 6 p.m. to talk with us for about an hour. Correct. And then move on to ARPA funding from there. Agreed. All right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. And in the meantime, um, our individual work is to brainstorm and, and come to that meeting with some ideas, questions, concerns, proposals, et cetera, about ARPA allocation and public input. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> cool. What else? Well, yeah, so we have that. lingering items. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know they're always there. Well, we can say on the 17th agenda, we're going to have appoint members to the new housing task yes. force we just created. When do you want to do that? The 17th, because we asked for applications yeah. by the 14th. Mm -hmm. The other things on the parking lot are noise ordinance, parking oh. ordinance. Oh, uh, Zen, Barn. Zen, Barn. Zen Barn. Zen Barn. October 3rd? Yeah. I would like to take this time to let you know I cannot attend October 3rd. I'll be, oh. I'll be uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, at, a, at a memorial service in Florida. So I can't, yeah, can't be here. Just as a heads up. That's fine. Carry on with that. <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry, there's something on the, should be on the parking lot as well? Uh, no, we were just we're brainstorming things that have come up as like community concerns that we said, let's put that. And one was we received a concern with regards to parking at Zumbart that we discussed briefly at the end of the last meeting, right. but decided we wanted Bill mm -hmm. Shetlock. I don't know if 
for that conversation. <laughs> and uh, Danny, you recommended that we get the, the interested parties uh, invited to that meeting mm -hmm. on the third. Um, I can take care of that. Thank you. And that would be. Is that okay, um, Danny? Like, do you feel like you, no. you're okay with that? Yeah. So we're planning with Zen Bar. Uh, yeah, have a good time without me, everyone. Noah, 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 and Noah and both Ari. Ari. And, uh, Ari. and uh, Brian. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I wonder if it's worth <coughs> outreach to the troopers to see about calls or things that came in. So it might be worth just mentioning to Bill. We also talked about Steve yeah, I'll mention providing. It to yeah, I was just going to say, my only in moving from the 3rd to the 17th, didn't we talk about, didn't you want Steve to come in regarding like what jurisdiction actually mm. do we have to regulate parking and entertainment? Yeah, and I think life? Bill's actually pretty good. I talked to Bill okay. about that uh, actually during that uh, um, informational uh, yeah. visioning thing. Oh, yeah. I spoke, yeah. I spoke to Steve Lotspeech about it, and he said one possible thing is to consider because of the dangerous aspect, a no park uh, official, because the ones that are there are just Zen barns, but uh, that whole stretch having you know a no parking zone from from the select board. Mm -hmm. Right, that's basically the, our only. You know, that's really our only so, choice. And, the way, because again, so we won't solve this, but we're right. confident so on October. Can I morning. ask a question? Maybe I sure heard something that the rest of you didn't hear, but didn't Bill speak the other night in reference to the to the uh, town right of way and that they were not parked in the on the town right of way? Right down below their driveway, he said. There's. I spoke to Steve about it. He said we've improved for the. Uh, the park that goes, you know, next right next to the golf course. There's kind of a town right of way, and that was improved during that whole process. So that I think they're parking on the town uh, right of way. But that's that's my point. I believe that Bill was wrong. I believe that they are parking in the town right that's of way. That's why, from my discussion with Steve, you're you're correct. Yeah, Chris. I believe so. And, and Woody could answer that question. Right. Um, but it's I, it's a matter of inf all enforcement. Yeah, how, right. how you do know, you the fishermen have tried doing something by putting up those you know, no parking, and it's helped a little so bit. So we're discussing the future agenda. I just wanted my right. we're picking that right. agenda. No, not not now. We're okay. Thank you. Yes. Litigate yes. on October third. Not that we're litigators, but we're going to discuss um, in detail. Do we want to October 3rd. see if Woody wants to attend also for that meeting? Is that worthwhile? I, I mean, I think, think most think of we should reach out to or reach well, out to Bill. Bill, Bill, and Bill, and Bill and see who he yeah, see who he right. wants to. Yeah. yeah. I, I just think, think when we have with Bill because I think it would would be a good idea to have Woody present. Um, and then you had spoken, Roger, with um, Skip about coming back for the sewer yep. discussion. Um, did he was we... not prepared to do it uh, this month. Um, uh, I would also propose November. At I was going to say the same November. Otherwise, I feel like we're going out to like February because of budget season. Right. So November might be a good opportunity. Yeah. And, there are other and I don't think that's one that you yeah. necessarily need to be there. Or in person, but uh, and what's the goal for that? Just Remember to when he came, the history of it? Yeah, yeah, came into the water yeah. one. Yeah, I think the concern is that uh, you know if we're you think anticipating any merging of uh, the groups uh, that uh, right. mm -hmm. EFUD feels as though we need to be better informed about. He wants us to know a little bit about what's going on before he hands the baton. Mm -hmm. So sewer, so let's pencil in November seven. Seven. Thank you for reminding me that. MOU with EFI oh, there we October go. 3rd with regards to the manager contract? Mm -hmm. Yes? Does that feel similar? How's October? Actually, yeah. it might be the 17th because when is EFUD's next regular meeting? Lefty or no? Lefty! <laughs> we, have we have to write an MOU with you about your regular meeting. Um, your, yeah, the, the second Wednesday? Karen. Second Wednesday in October. 12. October 12th for your regular, next regular meeting? So I guess the question would be, do we prepare Will we go to their meeting or do they come to ours? <laughs> Both and, that's the question. Is it a sandwich? Is it the third and the 17th? Um, we could ask Bill, but 
Well, it depends on either of those, right? EFA and MOU. So I don't think it'll be forever. Is, so there's already one in existence, so would it be updating? So on the 3rd, we could update what exists, propose it to EFA. They could have it at their meeting on the 12th, and then it can be finalized on the 17th. Is that like the process or I don't know? That might be good. I will also say at this point, I know Bill has been intentionally hands off for the hiring mm -hmm. process. To me, that feels like something he has professional Maybe staff is likely going to assist with. And, it, you know, so I don't know that it will take that long. Okay. Um, but we have it penciled. I'm just, I will yeah. also say I can send this to all of you. Mm -hmm. I'm filling in topics on dates. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, uh, and don't, uh, was it one of the objectives to, uh, clarify uh, how much uh, they'd be contributing mm -hmm. yep. to the uh, municipal manager, so. Correct, so, uh, yeah. I like so. Mm -hmm. It might be okay? possible, right? <laughs> 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 right, love About 75%. Are you okay with reaching back up to Skip and inviting him for November 7? I know a lot, there's a lot on your plate now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. thank you. Just because you already had that communication. Yeah. The neighbor. He's not far away. Yeah. <laughs> Just yell. <laughs> so we're talking the third for the sewer discussion, so we are in advance. No, November 7th. Okay, I heard that first, but. Yeah, third, sorry, for the MOU. I did the my brain jump too fast thing. Okay, <laughs> then I heard, uh, um, the, okay. So EFUD MOU regarding the municipal manager would be October 3rd and or 17th. Pending Bill Sheplug and EFUD's okay, thoughts. Okay, that's what I heard because I don't want it to be in advance. The history of EFUD and sewer in Waterbury, brought to you by Skip Flanders. <laughs> I mean, just zoom in willing. on that anyway. If yeah. I yeah. Uh, be like watching Gunsmoke again. Talk about just Get some popcorn. Watch it. Chris is at hunting camp. Yeah, so like, does a, a very comprehensive presentation. So <laughs> a lot of material. Um. Was there anything else? Social media policy? So I actually solicited some input from other committees and other towns, but I haven't had time to really, the manager search stopped everything else I was doing. So um, I'm happy to spend some time synthesizing the information and then presenting it, presenting maybe a proposal to the board. Um, what? Social media policy. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, with obviously lots of discussion because it hasn't something we've discussed, but I'm happy to do that. Um, and that might, does it seem like it needs to be November? Like how's the 17th pretty busy? The 17th, there is three things, but I mean, it's, one is review agenda for our meeting, appoint members of housing task right, force, not, they, and eat but MOU, yeah, none of those. Okay, so why don't we put it on the 17th then? That'll give me a little bit of time, thanks. Um, and obviously, you know, we do have a social media policy for town officials, right? Next well, academic, kind the of. Rec department. The rec department. The department. Social that's media exactly. Policy. Yeah. <laughs> Social media. Okay. BSP. Oof, noise ordinance. Um, huh. You know, it's like I fell out of bed. It's like a twilight zone. I fell out of bed from having you know, dial phones to, <laughs> into. High school kids, I was, when I was coming back from Montpelier this morning, every time I passed some kids standing beside the road waiting for the bus, they weren't talking to each other, they were just like this. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, what kind of world am I in now? You know, yeah. it's they were talking to each other for eight hours at school, they're sick of each other. Yeah. Because <laughs> they weren't supposed to be talking in class, so you know they were talking all the time. You know, it's amazing. Well, they are talking to each other. With we think, phones. yeah, right there, standing next to each other. Not my we think cell phones have been around forever, but if you watch some old television shows, they all have no, no function in That's those shows. When she's mentioned in the social media. Doesn't make for great TV. Right. <laughs> to no. be clear, I don't post anything on it, but we've received public requests and no, no, no. full it's, disclosure. It's, I think this is a fine social media policy. As do I. Posting, it's, but that's why we're going to, that way we'll have something to point to. The fact that um, we didn't have to go there. I know. Um, so, we, we can leave we those ordinances those on there for a little room. while, right? <laughs> well, so I was leave just, the noise ordinance and the parking lot ordinance. Well, I will say, and we don't need to pick a date now, it yeah. might be worth um, a 
know the Planning Commission, my dear friends, um, do have some administrative zoning bylaw updates that Neil drafted that I think they're reviewing and will ultimately come to us. They are not, as far as I understand, substantive policy changes. It's really like housekeeping on how long you need to notice things. So we'll defer to all of them, but I'm just saying for all of us, that will probably come up at some point. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have like a draft of the bylaw update, personally, again, I'm biased, I go there, but I think a planning commission, like them talking about yeah. the zoning rewrite and where they're at, which does relate to parking in that like, we inherited the weird parking ordinance right. from yes. the former village yes. trustees and the stacked not. three cars high that you love administering. Oh, <laughs> you know? uh, don't get me uh, sorry, like, water in, water out. How many? <laughs> It worked. Um, Don't get me started. So at least for, as someone who's been on the planning commission, like there is some weird things where, um, you know, some of that defaults to what we all choose to do about parking. We talked about Stowe Street parking too. Yeah. Um, so maybe we say parking at some point. Parking. Yeah, that at probably doesn't need to go to. And we're gonna have budget stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. So Just... it feels like we got a lot of these on agendas. Yeah. And stuff that wasn't in the parking lot that needed to happen got on agendas. Speaking of past things, I know we discussed at the last meeting the striping of Stowe Street. Does anyone know if there's any plans for that to happen? We approved. Yeah, I don't know the, the date, but. The, the narrowing. Uh, yes, I mean, we approved that they put in narrowing uh, for traffic calling. Right. Stowe Street. I mean, you could reach out to Woody for dates. Right. He doesn't like send those updates to us, but we'll see which lines get wore off first. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just thinking it's getting later and later in the season. It's going to be at some point where he's not going to be able to do it. Yeah. Well. Well, he said that he was going to do the outside lines and that the state, state was in charge of doing the double yellow line. Right. In the in the middle. So yeah. he's doing his part. Yeah. But I don't know exactly what he's planning on doing. Okay. Sure we'll yeah. Is there anything so prefer to, to, to come before us on agenda topics oh, and schedule? Oh, why don't we talk about Santa? I'm oh, well, well, that was going to be budget in December. Uh, kids, it? cancer. Well, well, yeah, well, well we know that too. Roger, come on. I thought that was going to be I, right. the Bolton <laughs> Sandpit. We're bouncing around the wall. What us? <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be part of the. It may even want to be part of this. ARPA discussion, uh, you know, might be oh, good sure. time to talk about it. True. Um, because it kind of falls into us buying something. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> so do we well, want to put that the saving, point? saving something, put it that way. Are, are you proposing that we uh, make advanced purchases of aggregate? Or is it like a bigger deal of possibly, yeah. purchase? Yeah. Like purchase possibly. Well, I've already mentioned it to Bill about buying possibly five years of oh, sand, that sand, road sand supply ahead yeah. of time. Um, and, you know, there also was discussion because you just rang the bell for me. Uh, remember I talked about the quarry on Sweet Road? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder whatever happened with that whole deal with I don't uh, Glenn, think Glenn anybody. Anderson and the lawsuit and what happened with the, our proposal to the... the Agreed. Never, That's a thing. We should get a report came, back. Came we just have to, to do it um, probably. To, for us to hear what yeah. took place. And I, if I forget who I heard from. I heard that the landowner wasn't interested. Really? Mm. Right. I heard we could ask, Bill yeah, Bill for a, we can ask Bill for an update. official update on our yeah. meeting. The third? Yeah. Is that okay? It also might have to be executive session because some of that was legal. Right. So you so that could be something that you bring to that ARPA meeting and then if we choose it can also go in a budget right. discussion. Um, and I'm also just saying out loud that we will have two of these meetings with input from the parks planning study, not scheduled yet. Um, okay. what did Steve just say? I'm looking at um, late fall, that does not help me. Um, <laughs> late fall meetings for input on concepts, but just knowing that among those, it's like probably not October, um, November. Maybe, but yeah, probably that November 7th, I'm gonna write maybe parks input um, dependent. You know, they're keeping the survey open through the 30th and then you need to do things. Where did the noise ordinance end up? It didn't. 
Purgatory. Purgatory. Well, we talked about it being dealing with the zoning changes. Well, that's more of the parking versus noise. But, but I would right. think noise would have to do also with zoning. They're both coming from the same place. Right. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, we could Burn. say for the 7th, having since we will have met with Lieutenant White on the 20th, and have a <laughs> inaccurate understanding of enforcement capacity, which if I recall is often the barrier between. Yeah, can you make a bold? Noise ordinance question mark? Yeah, or just like a, the enforcement conversation in general so that we don't forget, because I think yeah. we keep continually forget things we say one hour earlier. And then... OK. Anything further on agenda topics and scheduling? <laughs> I think we've about beat that to death. Honestly, I think this has been a really productive yeah. use of yeah. our time. And I will say, no, we don't have to go to this extent, but in the future, I think the like check-in about next meeting's agenda at the end of a meeting, I personally find really helpful just to mm -hmm. go remember. OK. If not, we'll move on to the next item. And I think the last item, which would be the Children's Cancer Awareness Week. The folks from the Children's Cancer Awareness Week, um, they were writing to request a proclamation from the town recognizing October 23rd to October 29th as Childhood Cancer Awareness Week in Waterbury. Uh, cancer, of course, is the leading cause of death by disease among children in our country today. This challenging, this tragic disease is detected in more than 16,000 of our country's young people each and every year, and we are grateful for Vermont's many support. It's basically the Lions Club is sponsoring this request uh, this year. They're just asking for a town proclamation uh, to say it's Childhood Cancer Awareness Week. I don't see a real problem with that. If, I know each one of you have been sent a copy of uh, the memo by, I guess it comes from ACFC Kids. I'll move that we recognize uh, October 23rd and 29th as uh, Child uh, Cancer Week in the library. Cancer Awareness. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second it. Just in terms of discussion, they pretty much gave a bunch of whereas for the proclamation. Did we want to, add, they said, uh, please add your concluding statement. And just whereas the town of Waterbury supports any efforts toward, uh, you know, ending childhood cancer, you know, in, in this country. I think it would be as simple as that. Sure. That friendly amendment. Okay. If we have a motion, and I believe a second, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was writing Chris. 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 So, Mike, are you going to draft our. It's um, kind of there. Well, yeah, but you want to put it on letterhead and finish right. the therefore, and sign, and then we can I'll sign it. I'll speak in. to Bill. I don't know, because okay. I know a lot of times they have, you know, these official <laughs> things with a seal. Do, do you know if they, have they been doing that when they do a proclamation? Mm, I haven't seen official things with a seal. I mean, we certainly have letterhead. Right. No yeah. question about that. But right. Just I just know, like I just know from working in the federal government, we, you know, and even in state government, you see a lot of times they have something of very official with a seal or something. I don't know if the so town even has one. What my, <laughs> I would say, well, Ifan made a nice little one for Carla at their last meeting, and it's uh, pretty casual, would be the yeah. word I would use. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah so what I would, it would just type it up in Word and then have it, you know, put on the town letterhead and we can exactly. all sign it. Yeah. So you're gonna do that? Yep. Okay. It's pretty easy. Just, 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 just adding the one quick extra sentence to what they have to the like 
One. The Montpelier example that's attached is a good one, and you can copy the bottom. It's like, therefore, the town of Montpelier declares blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So. It's a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that won't be hard to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, is that's there anything further to become before us? If not, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Also moved. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, 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 Chris, uh -oh, before. Discussion. Uh, do we need to sign the contract? We do. Yes, we before do. Before we Before we adjourn, or can we do it? We authorize the signing. Right. Contract. We authorize. So I think we're, we're okay to well, Let's all stick around. Yeah, okay. thanks. We did finish before nine. Good luck, Chris. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Then I. Then, then we're all <laughs> aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Motion, motion passes.